Thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, let's now tell you that in an era of political transformation and social awakening, South Africans find themselves at a crossroad once again. Just a few months before the highly anticipated 2024 elections, a new political party, United Africans Transformation, has emerged. According to its deputy spokesperson, Mighty Mabule, the party aims to reshape the political discourse and present new possibilities for South Africa's future. The formation of the United Africans Transformation Party comes two weeks after Shembe, another of South Africa's largest churches, also founded a political party. However, the United Africans Transformation Party claims to be independent, but as the backing of one of the South Africa's largest churches. The IPHC called the International Pentecost Holiness Church. The formation of UAT was triggered by clearly lack of service delivery in our communities, endless service delivery protests across our entire South Africa, high levels of unemployment, particularly amongst the youth, relentless load shedding by ESCO, critical shortage of medicine in the majority of government health facilities, and embedded corruption and nepotism in government institutions and sustainably high level of violent crime, which is predominantly affecting the previously disadvantaged populace, the orphans, the destitute, the deprived, the deprived, the sick, and the neglected masses of South African society. UAT is a radical economic transformation movement that brings various communities, particularly previously disadvantaged, to pursue the struggle for full economic transformation and emancipation. And to discuss more on this, I'm being joined by Jafta Baloyi, who is with the United Africans Transformation Party, and he joins me from Johannesburg, South Africa. Jafta, it's nice to have you on the news. Good afternoon. Nice to be invited by you. And of course, we just watched an excerpt where one of your representatives talked about the critical issues affecting um, South Africa, talk about security a rising rate of unemployment and all other attending issues, including the economy and the rights to exercise one's uh, franchise and freedom. Now, these are part of the critical issues uh, confronting the country, and you have all come together to form a new party. Um, how uh, deep are these issues in terms of the concerns that it has for you and the citizens of South Africans, and what ways are you believing that your party will be able to resolve them? Yeah, well, from 1994, when uh, South Africa was uh, going to democratic freedom, a lot of things were supposed to happen for people of South Africa to realize the freedom. So 30 years later, as UAT, we have realized that none of the above is happening. And yet we sat together to say the service delivery in this country is shocking. The, 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 the jobless, especially the youth, the rentless load in by ESCOM, the shortage of medicine into government and health facilities. So those are the issues that affect basic people in, within South Africa. And we said, look, we've been following certain institutions, but we haven't realized change. So that is why we said, look, let's get together and see if we can be united as Africans and transform together and go forward to say, look, this is what needs to happen. We need justice for our people. We need to make sure that service deliveries is an issue of the past and make sure we join hand with normal community members, with members of the society, leaders of the community to make change within our country and try and fix the challenges that we face as South Africa at large. So that's how we came about to say, look, it's either now or never, let's get together and start an organization and a movement that will change people's life. Uh, that understood, uh, Jaftar. But then what is the X factor for this party? Um, you've talked about a couple of issues. What is that unique perspective or probably ideology or a different kind of policy statement that you are presenting to the people different from what people already know with the already established parties that you believe can change the narrative for the country? We, we based everything on humility. And, and family values to say, look, you, you as, as the United Af Africa's transformation, we fairly a new organization and we are finalizing 
our policy document and my first draft, which will be launched in no time. But as a status quo is, we, we say, look, let's go back to, to family values. Let's go back to humility and not say it's all color and unite as Africans. So taking the approach whereby we, we look at, at, at the basic need of the people of South Africa or the people at last to say, look, if we get together, unite, and, and, and make sure that we go to the basic needs of the people, look after our youth, look after our elder people. Like if you look now in South Africa, clearly there's issues that has been going on, like protests and that, but we say, if we can go back and engage the community into the municipalities and make sure the communities are involved with the leaders of UAT, that would be the different strategy. Unlike people sitting, discussing without involving people on the ground, the community, that's the biggest thing that we know. And we are already consulting with the, the, the community at large as we are busy building the branches, launching the branches. We understand what the people need. So the difference from us and others is we're going to get everybody involved to make sure we address the issues that affect the society. Now, uh, you said that you are making moves to get everyone involved, but then we know that um, the United Africans Transformation Party has been backed by the largest um, church in South Africa, according to reports, the IPHC. So how do you want to aggregate people with different or diverse religious background, morals, and values, and uh, bring them on your side to champion your cause and support your ideals. How do you want to harmonize these people with different uh, backgrounds and religious, of course, uh, affiliation? Well, let me clarify that Afri United Africa's transformation is not associated directly with the church called IPIC. There's a, there's a social partner that we have called the Tao Project. And Tao Project is a it's a charity organization that comes from the church. So it's, it's a church charity organization. So we have partnered with them because the model that they're using of helping the needy, the destitute, and the orphans and the sick is what, as UAT, we stand for. So there's no direct say we need to embrace IPAC's regulations to be part of UAT. So UAT and the church is two different entities. The only thing that makes us to, to, to be in contact is through Tao Project being the, the, the social relief uh, 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 institution. So we don't let people come into UAT because of, of, of the certain different religions that have to adjust to the religion that we have. In South Africa, everybody has the right to join each and every organization, regardless of religion. So we are not a religion-based organization from IPAC to say, you need to go according to the laws. It's a separate entity, but Tau Project is a social partner that we are dealing with as, as a model that we, we, we stand for. So it's not like people need to join our organization and also embraces the rules of the church. So it's not like that. Jaftar, thank you so much for talking to us. We wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Moving on to other stories now.